Well, a lot of what that Grinnell does is um, it makes it helps you think outside the box. That problems creative problem solving and the ability to take on a problem and solve it, work your way through it is something Grinnell will definitely help you with. And small liberal arts colleges in general will uh, force you to do. You get a lot more one one time with uh, faculty. You get research opportunities. You get the ability to the ability to do projects outside school, partnering with professors and faculty. And so just this can-do attitude, and I think the, the much lauded uh, liberal arts way of thinking uh, is definitely something that helps you long term. You might not be a, a subject matter expert, but um, you can become a subject matter expert given the opportunity. And so, uh, of course, most liberal arts colleges are uh, kind of uh, uh, questioned because they might not offer many pre-professional tracks and business analytics being one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. But do you think that was true in case of Grinnell as well? Like you have limited, say, uh, courses, say, in finance and econ uh, economics or in quantitative math, which could be applied in business or operations research and so on and so forth. I think... Um... The, the, the curriculum definitely skews towards academia and not pre-professional classroom classes. I know that's growing, but it's not quite there yet, specifically at Grinnell. Uh, if you're interested in academia, it's the perfect school to go to because it really sets you up well to make that jump into a PhD program of your choice. But I think from a pre-professional standpoint, um, there will be some challenges. Uh, Grinnell doesn't claim to be a school that I think targets those pre-professional kinds of students that are looking for more rigorous academic thinking and research. Um, but on the flip side, what I found is even without that pre-professional um, pre coursework, a lot of students, especially who take study in the quantitative fields, end up doing really well and finding good jobs. Just because of that, I think Grinnell is recognized for their academic rigor. And so when you get through a program like a math program or a you know science program at Grinnell, employers do look favorably at that. And you can have a small, well-connected network of alumni who are willing to talk to you. So uh, what we do lack in pre-professional coursework, you really do make up an academic rigor um, and uh, the alumni network and just the fact that Grinnell is pretty well known. Fantastic. And so if you were to look at uh, how your career trajectory sort of moved forward, uh, mm -hmm. and then pursuing the grad school at a very different school. So we'd love to know more about College of William and Mary. And then mm -hmm. how do you uh, compare it with uh, your undergrad experience as well? I know the grad school and undergrad are two different things. But of course, in terms yeah. of setting the student body, the number of people around campus, connections to maybe larger cities nearby. Uh, mm -hmm. So how was it like to be at College of William and Mary for your grad school? And what did you actually study? So it was very different. I'll start. Sorry, I'll start. Take a step back. Um, yeah. Studied. I studied a master's in business analytics at the College of William Mary. It's a one-year program uh, through their business school. Um, I applied three years after I graduated from undergrad. So I graduated in 2014, worked for three years, and I did my master's. Um, the idea for me switching tracks was, hey, I doing some applied math, some applied econ. I really need that that extra zing in the resume that can make me switch full time into the data science field. And so that's why I did the business analytics masters. And I thought William and Mary really helped that way. It was a very different feel from Grinnell. Um, it was straight away, and that could be because it's a business school program, but straight away, everything's focused on you getting a job. Like when I mean, your resume is polished, you have career fairs week one and week two of your um, you know, program. You're constantly networking with alum. You're constantly networking with uh, different companies who are coming in for meet and greets and interview days. Um, so it's it's a very different experience. And even going in uh, undergrad, I know there's, there's, you're also building your social life. You're meeting new people from different countries. You make friends. You're going to be going through this experience together for four years. So that's that personal aspect of things. I think grad school that's lacking, and that might be lacking in the shorter term programs. It's almost transactional where you know you're going here for a year to 10 months. Uh, you know you want a job on the other side. So everyone's hyper-focused on their work and their uh, job search. And there isn't as much of a um, 
cohort feeling to it uh, was my, my experience. Um, you get to interact with people a lot more professionally and um, interact with them almost as if you're in some kind of networking event that's a year long. Um, <laughs> but on the flip side, what, what, what you do, do find in these master's programs is a lot of the students coming in are hard, super hard working and have achieved a decent amount in their three years between college and uh, master's program. So it's, it's hyper competitive and that kind of pushes you a little bit too. So overall, a very different experience. <laughs> <laughs> but if you look at, I know you were a master's student as pre-professional, but were you able to also make observations on the undergrad program at College of William and Mary, not as a student, but vicariously through stories that you hear? It was a little difficult at William and Mary specifically because all the undergrads live on campus and then the graduate students live on campus, but the graduate dorm is separate it out into a different corner. So you very rarely interact with uh, the undergrads. But in terms of the opportunities that I saw, you know, all the companies coming in, the big networking events, the um, the, the network, the socializing the different companies and trips out to the big cities to meet companies in person, that carried for both uh, undergrad and master students. So you have those opportunities at William & Mary, which you might not necessarily have in Grinnell. And, I, and also being on the East Coast, that proximity to DC, New York, Boston, Philadelphia helps a lot because all of these companies are more than happy to um, send representatives down for meet and greet sessions and recruiting events and such. Okay, let's uh, spend some time to learn from you about the field of business <laughs> analytics. What does it really mean? <laughs> what do you study and what do you really apply in real life in a financial yeah. industry? Sure thing. So, um, so you can think of business analytics almost as a salesy kind of name. Really, what you're learning is uh, data science. Um, so it's a lot of programming in Python, R, um, which are the most marketable tools out there right now. Um, your upper level stats classes, if you're a math major, they'll put a slightly flat name on it, call it machine learning. <laughs> um, but, and you'll do a lot more around data management, data infrastructure systems, and things like that. So really, it's it's a jack of all trades kind of degree because it's a one year program. You'll get a little bit of exposure to all of these fields. Um, and then the idea is you find an industry that is of interest to you and you get deep in that. So for example, my first job out of college after, after my master's program was at a mortgage backed security this firm was building, and my role in the firm was a team of three people who were building a program that companies could use to standardize and analyze their mortgage data. So the idea being we built a program in Python where anyone can submit just an Excel file, name it whatever, and we can figure out what their Excel file looked like compared to the same Excel file in another company and benchmark that across you know, large data sets that the government puts out, et cetera. So it's a lot of work with data, um, programming, you know, using machine learning models to not necessarily always do flashy things, but do things like, like, you know, understand what a data set is without looking at it, or understand how you can um, make a process repeatable and automated so that you're making saving time for a company. Um, so that's that's one aspect of it from a data pure perspective. My second role was Capital One, where I worked at it from a more traditional BA role. And what you're doing there is you're at this bank which has billions upon billions of gigs of data, and you have to try and figure out and manage different portfolios, uh, make sure that the bottom line is doing well. So as an analyst, you are responsible for that bottom line. So right now my role is in fraud, and so a lot of what I work, what the work I do is monitor fraud rings, fraud attempts that are coming into the market in, that are impacting the company, and try and mitigate that, put strategies in place um, that ensure that you know fraudsters aren't able to continue to making attacks the way they do, and also prevent any future attacks that they might come up with. So it's almost a uh, whack-a-mole game where fraudsters will do something, we'll react, they'll do something else, we'll react, but that just goes on forever. But the business analytics comes in terms of being able to look at the data, identify what's going on, identify patterns, and then be able to make decisions. 